Kevin's trying to bulk create sales orders and Zoho Finance, but running into issues with the auto-generated numbers. Let's see what we can do on this week's Azaz. Welcome to Ask Zanata Anything About Zoho. I'm Greg Belknap, and today we're looking at a question from one of our viewers, Kevin Chambers. Kevin asks, is there a way to keep auto-generated numbers, but also use the API to override them? In Kevin's case, he's creating these sales orders and invoices and other transactions all via API and code. So we're going to answer his question, but afterwards, I would like to talk a little bit more about the Zoho Finance auto numbering feature in general and about some features you might not have been aware of. Let's take care of Kevin's question. For all of my intrepid coders out there, we're going to the Zoho Books API documentation. Then we want to scroll down to either sales order, invoices, whichever transaction we're looking to create. In Kevin's case, he's looking at sales orders, so let's click on that. And let's click on create a sales order. Here on the create sales order API page, I have information on all the different parameters that I would need to pass in in order to create a sales order for Zoho Books, inventory, subscriptions, etc. The information about the auto-generated number can be found by scrolling down and here we have the parameter sales order underscore number that this is where you want to put in a manual number if you're say importing a bunch of sales orders this field is mandatory if your auto number generation is disabled now your auto number generation might be disabled for your entire organization but it could also be turned on but you want to override that auto-generated number for some manual sales orders that you're creating via code. And for that, there is an additional parameter you can pass in, ignore auto number generation. So if you set ignore underscore auto underscore number underscore generation to true, then you'll be able to put in whatever sales order number you want for your particular call. So Kevin, I hope that answers your specific question. But now that we've answered that specific one, I'd like to look at the larger setting of how auto-generated numbers are set up and how you might be able to get some more use out of them than you were previously. How do you even set up auto number generation? Well, auto number generation is usually on by default, uh, but if you wanted to set up some specific settings, you would do that under settings and under the new Zoho Finance settings page, it's under this customization tab. And then here we have transaction number series. Here is where you can see all of the different ways that your transactions can use auto-generated numbers based on what records have already been created. In this instance, I have multiple transaction series enabled, which is a feature that I bet you probably didn't even know about. You can only access it by coming into this settings screen as opposed to say being on an estimate or an invoice and clicking on the little gear icon next to the estimate or invoice number, which is another way that you can access the setting for auto-generated numbers, but you're only able to access the ones for that particular module in that instance. If I go to the settings here, I can access all of the auto-generated numbers across all of my modules all at once. If you don't have multiple transaction number series enabled, then when you come to this screen, you'll just be met with the default transaction series. And here you'll be able to see every module that you have and the current prefix associated with each of those, as well as the starting number and whether or not the numbers should restart. Inside of the prefixes, you can also create some placeholders, such as the year of the start of the fiscal year, or based on the year of the transaction, or the full date, or the month. So let's say I wanted to put in the transaction date into the credit note. You'll see this percent %DD. When I actually go to create a credit note, it will input that date on my behalf. I can also decide whether or not the numbering should restart on a yearly basis or not. And this preview will update after you save that particular numbering series. So now that I have this transaction number series set up, what if I wanted to set up another one? Let's say I have two separate sales channels, one through Shopify and another through Zoho Commerce. And I wanted to set up separate auto numbering transactions 
for each of those. Let's say I have two main sales channels, trade shows and Shopify. And I, for whatever reason, I wanted to keep those numbers separated. They should still auto-generate one after another, but on two separate tracks. Well, then I could set up an additional transaction number series here in these settings. So the way that I add a new series is by coming up here and clicking on new series. And I met with the same screen uh, that I saw on the default series. And as you can see, it starts by grabbing whatever your default series is and copying all of that information, but setting all the starting numbers at one. Once you have your multiple series in place, the way that you select which series a given transaction will be on is on the transaction creation page. So let's look at creating a new estimate, for example. When I open up my create estimate page, my estimate number now has an additional dropdown field next to the estimate number saying which transaction number series is being used. Obviously it defaults to the default, but if I wanted to change that to one of my other series, so I could select alternate series, then it changes the estimate number automatically to whatever the next number in that particular series would be. And as always, I can enable or disable settings for this particular estimate. If I wanted to enter a manual number, I am certainly within my right to do so. And here it's going to select that first available number for that particular series. Now let's say I wanted to override that value for a particular instance. I could select to enter my estimate numbers manually, at which point now I can create my own numbers. What you can also do is manually change the number in this field at which point you'll be met with a pop-up asking if you want to switch back to the auto-generated number, turn off auto-generated numbers for this module, or use this manual entry for this particular estimate, continue using the auto number generation for the next estimate. And all of this can be accomplished as well in APIs. It just means that if you have multiple transaction series set up, you'll need to specify which transaction number series you want your estimate or sales order or invoice to follow. Otherwise, it will default to the default choice. Well, that's gonna do it for today's Azaz. I hope you found it useful or maybe learned something new. If you did, we'd love a like and subscribe here on our Zanata YouTube channel. You can also go to zanata.com to check out our resource library, join Club Zanata, or Check out any of our CRMs and shows to catch up on the latest Zoho news. Thank you once again, and we'll see you in the next video.